Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today's video is sponsored by my good buds over at Squarespace. This video is sort of a hacky and fun tutorial on creating this cord plugging in animation. It's pretty simple in theory, but I'll say if you aren't super familiar with things like object orientations and some general troubleshooting, then this could be a little bit of a tricky one for you. I do a little stumbling myself, but hey, that's what learning Blender is all about, right? Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start off by just doing some pretty simple modeling here. I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining what I'm doing, but just wanna give myself a little bit of a uh, port that we can kind of work with for our animation, just to give it a little bit of context. Um, so I'm going to just add a little bit of bevel to this. Let's go ahead and add in our bevel modifier. I did that kind of in reverse order. I set the bevel weight, then here I'm gonna set that limit method to weight and just turn that up till it kind of runs into itself. Add a couple segments there. Shade it smooth, turn on my auto smooth option. And then um, let's just so we can see what we're better doing the whole time, turn on the cavity there. Um, I'm going to select this inner edge, duplicate it, press P to separate that by selection. And then I'm going to add a little bit of solidity to this just to kind of make a sort of metal interior to our port there. Uh, if I change that solidify mode from simple to complex, um, we can avoid some of those errors we were getting. And that'll also allow me to add another bevel on top of this just to kind of round that out so it looks nice and soft for our soon to be entering male end of the port. So that's our female end. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. And I'm going to make the male portion of this. Just kind of scale that down so it fits nice. Going for obviously a little bit of a USB-C style thing here. Um, let's see, what can we do? Let's uh, duplicate this one more time. And then I will, so we need it to go right there. I think I'm going to turn off the bell weight for those edges and then just add in sort of a manual bevel for right here. So let's do a control B just until that's looking halfway decent, something like that. I think it's gonna be fine. And then I'll fill that in and fill that in. And now we sort of have a nice little male and female port. So um, the first thing <laughs> I always say that, we just did all the first things. I'm going to do the next things, which is going to be adding in a curve that we can animate our port following along with the cord and everything so that it can eventually plug into our little default cube, which now for some reason has a port on it. Um, so go ahead and save your file if you haven't already, but I'm going to add in a curve here. So I'm just going to do a path and then um, I will, let's move this up. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to move this stuff out of the way just so that I know my origin at the center. Um, some of these con concepts we're going to be doing are sort of complex, and if you have like a known origin, which is just in the middle of the scene, uh, that's going to make things a little bit easier. Um, but I need to make my path, so I want the port to I want it to end by going straight down into the port. So I'm just holding Control, make sure that's at 90 degrees. Um, so this will be, I'll, I'll say the end of the path, and then this will be sort of the top of the path. Now do whatever shape you want here, um, but I might just do kind of a little bit of a, maybe like a, a spiral shape where it can maybe wrap around our cube and then um, sort of, yeah, end by going in. And I'll just kind of trail that off so that it goes a little bit off the screen there. So that'll sort of be my shape that spins around. Um, you could kind of have it go up. Um, if I press O to turn on my proportional editing and then select connected only, I can press G and Z and then just bring this up with the mouse wheel. And that will allow me to kind of make that a little bit more of a spiral shape. Um, so that'll be the path that our cord takes. It'll come in from the left here, spin around, and then go down into the female end. Plugging in cords to cubes is cool, but plugging in your portfolio to a fresh and gorgeous website is business, baby. 
If you don't have a website already, then what are you doing? Seriously, what are you doing? Squarespace leaves no excuse for you with their easy to use and beautifully designed templates. Round up all your favorite projects and drop them in to get a portfolio site up and running in no time. Not just a portfolio though. I said business, right? Rounding up new clients is as easy as one, two, three, contact me. Use one of their many contact form modules and give those big money buyers a place to reach out. Don't wait any longer and get started today at squarespace.com slash Dirk for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Don't wait any longer. Get started today. Um, I'll go ahead and move this back into place and I'll put it just kind of lower right there. Um, okay, so the first, <laughs> there I go again. What you would want to do traditionally, maybe, would be to add a curve modifier to this port object and select that NURBS path. And then you just want to get your um, direction going the right way, which in my case, I think would be, I think it would actually be the Y, maybe the negative X. This is where it gets kind of confusing and frustrating. But negative Z, negative Z looks like it. So that gets it following the path just fine, but it bends. And that seems like a simple, annoying thing. Maybe in the future, there'll be a better way to fix it. But if you don't want that, like if you're going for a realistic animation, that just does not work. Um, so we don't actually want to have a curve modifier on this object, but instead we want to have it on another object that's not going to bend and then have the port attached to that. But if you, because when we're moving this along, what is it now, the z-axis, um, if you actually look at the origin of this object, which right now is right there, and we move it, um, you can see that's just going down. So if we parent that to another object, it's just going to go down like that. It's not actually going to follow the curve. So there's another little trick we can do, which is to create an instance of this object on another object that won't deform. So that object will do as a plane. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit and I'm gonna rename this plane um, head control. Let's call it that. And then I want to, okay, so that origin is at the middle. This origin, even though the, um, this seems like it's in a weird place, the origin of this is actually also at the middle. So on this plane object, I want to instance the head object. So in the settings down here in the object, under instancing, we can have instance on faces and nothing will happen, but that's because we need to parent this port object to this instance object. So control P, object, keep transform, and where's our other thing? <laughs> uh, oh wait, it's, it's because it's smaller, I think. Did I do that right? Okay, so we got instancing on faces. I think that's, oh, it's because the curve. I think we need to get rid of the, no, we don't have a curve modifier. Why is that all the way over there? Parent. Okay, so not totally sure what happened there, but make sure you remove the curve modifier from your port object. And I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna re-add in shift A mesh plane. That is our, um, this will be our instancing object. So let's turn on faces instancing, and then we need to parent the port object to the instance object, which I think what's happening is that they were just right on top of each other, which is maybe why it didn't look right. So if we go ahead and add the curve modifier, let's select our curve and then have it be the negative Z again. 
Yes, so now when we move the instance object, which this is the fake one, this is the instance, this is the real one, we need to keep it there. We'll be able to hide it after the fact. Now when we move this on the Z location, you can see that the instance object is following that, but it's not deforming. So that is now working properly. So just check your, I think, yeah, what happened is just, it was hard to tell because they were on top of each other. Um, so now if we now add in our chord object, that's gonna be the next step. I'm gonna push shift A and add in a plane. And then just, I'm going to just make a line in the middle of it. So it's origins in the middle and then scale that out on the x-axis, just kind of however long you want your chord to be. And then I'm gonna add in a skin modifier, which uh, the skin modifier will add in a ton of edge loops for you, so you don't need to add them into the chord. Uh, but those loops are important for making it bend around the curve. So I'm gonna add in also a subdivision surface modifier, just so that this is more chord-like, and I'll check that smooth shading button. And then let's just kind of bring this down a little bit till it's about the right size. Um, now this object will also get a curve modifier. So let's select our only curve in the scene. And I think we want this to be the same. So because we're gonna need, to, we wanna be able to move these together. And this one's moving on the Z. So we want this one to also move on the Z. So we might need to rotate it. Okay, so now if we move it on the Z, it should be moving the same. So if I move it up on the Z, it's going further in. If I move this one up on the Z, it's going out. <laughs> okay, so this is confusing. Let's spin that back around the other way. Okay, now if I move this up on the Z, it's going in. Uh, this one up on the Z, it's going out. Okay, <laughs> let's try something else here. Devorm negative Z. Let's see if that works. Okay, move it up on the Z, it's going out. Move this one up on the Z, it's going out. Okay, so <laughs> they're both moving the right direction, finally. Now, um, I'm definitely going to leave that in the video because you 100%, okay, not 100%, but curves are really freaking annoying and you'll have to do a lot of stuff like that. So just, uh, just stick with it. Don't get frustrated. Um, but, uh, to actually animate this, obviously we're going to be animating this Z value, but, um, if we were to animate this Z value, we would also have to animate this Z value. And if you're doing really simple animation, you can just add keyframes for both of them, but, um, it's a little bit easier if you can just animate one object. So I'm going to add in an empty object. Uh, let's just make that a cube. And I think I can put that wherever, but probably should just leave it in the origin so that nothing is as likely to go wrong. And then I want to parent the instance object to the empty, control P, keep transform, and my chord object, which is this name that chord. I also want to parent that to the empty object, keep transform. Now when we move this, they're moving together, which is fantastic. So um, now what we need to do is just slide this chord until it lines up in the right place, somewhere right about there, and we should be good. So we have another little bit of a problem here. Let me just go ahead and add in the actual animation here. So we want this to end right about there. So I'm gonna insert a keyframe on the Z. Um, let's just have this be 150 frames long. So let's pull this back to right there. And then what else? Let's pull this back to frame one and have it go wherever we want the kind of whole thing to start. Maybe somewhere right there will be sort of right off frame. Okay, so now we have our animation happening. Uh, but the problem is that the chord is not staying in the middle and that's because this instanced object is being tracked to the origin of the face and they're, they're sort of just misaligned. So we want the origin of this object, which is our original one, to line up with where that chord connects. 
So I think I can just do this right here. I'm gonna do effect only origins. And then I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. And that's not working. Whew, okay. Um, down, grab it on the Y, grab on the X, grab on the X, grab on the Y. Of course it's not working. It's never that easy when you're doing this stuff. Maybe if I move this object, the parent, of course. No, it's not gonna be any of that. Um, okay, so I think I need to do this kind of with some of these things disabled. So let's just undo our curve from that view. And let's turn off for proportional editing. So we want, so right now the offset is bad. Okay, so I need to select just that object and then maybe do that. Okay, mm. I knew I should have done this earlier. Okay, so the origin is the problem here. Oh, was that doing it? No, of course that's not doing it. Okay, well now I don't know what I did. Don't want to move that. Okay, so the instance object is, let's uncheck these. So where the fake object is in relation to the instance object is exactly where it's ending up. So why does that not mean I can just move that down? Turn the curve on. So the origin of that object is right there. Why can't I move that down? Is that gonna make it work? Oh, of course, that also did not make it work. Okay, so I'm gonna reset the, ro the location of that cube. I'm gonna reset the location of this. Turn off the curve so you can't see it in the viewport. I'm gonna move this down. Wait, no. Origin, move this up. So the origin's there. And then move it down so that the base of it is on the plane. And then let's try turning this back on. Oh my God, it's brilliant. I think it's working. Okay. So yes, I think I just had to move it back to the center. So the parent thing, this that it was parented to, I think was throwing all the locations off a little bit. I don't know if that's a like a bug thing or just curves being them typical their typical selves. Very frustrating. Okay, so now this should look a lot better. At last. Okay. So really frustrating. Sorry I didn't get that figured out on the first try, but because I didn't, you probably won't either. No hate on you. Uh, and to the people who had no problem at all. Well, that's just good for you. Okay, so let's um, let's add in, well, we've already got a camera here. Let's take a look at our scene. I just wanna show you kind of where we'll end up with the rendered view. So let's make this shader editor, save your file if you haven't. And that keeps happening for some reason, these curves, I don't know what that's all about. Um, maybe I can just switch to my CPU renderer for now. Okay, so on the instance object, if we go into the settings and we show instance or in viewport, no. Show instance or in render, no. We also don't want to render that one down there, that extra one. So if I point my camera down to look at that, okay, so there it is, really gray and dark. So you can see it in the viewport, but when I render, it is not there. I swear it's not there. It's not just that it's gray on gray. Uh, is it? <laughs> uh, let's make it purple. So we can really check. Okay, so it's visible in the viewport, not visible in the render. Okay, so that is working properly. So let's just, yeah. I think, I mean, we're pretty much good. We pretty much covered it, but I will do some more things. How did that get that object? Okay, oh, and these all have that, um, that material. So, I guess we don't need to jump into shading quite yet because I also need to show you. All right, so that's covered, won't render. Feel free to take it from here if you know what you're doing, but I want to make this plug in the right way. That's another small but glaring issue we have at the moment. 
which is that the port doesn't go in straight. So it does animate right now, which was promised we'd do that at least. Um, I need to adjust my keyframes here a little bit. So let's just bring the Z up until it's sitting flush, which is right about there. So let's replace that keyframe. So now at least it doesn't go past it, which is good. And then um, I need to twist this curve so that it's not, don't twist this object because then you're just gonna give yourself all sorts of other curve pain. But let's select these and then I'm just gonna change the tilt on it just till it's kind of going the right way. And you could do that anywhere on the curve too. Like if you wanted to just add some tilt right there and you'll have a fun little surprise when it gets there. Whoa, and then it twists back. Kind of cool. And as you can see now, it's tilting into the proper orientation at the very end, which realistically we probably need to, uh, to tilt this one a little too. Oh, and that screwed it up. So I'll just undo that. Um, but yeah, you can go on the curve and you can tilt it. If you make changes to your curve, specifically the length, you will have to recalibrate your end keyframe so that it ends up in the right place. But um, but yeah, we did it. <laughs> Little bit of trial and error there, but we did it. You can do it too. Um, you know, with these curves, you don't usually want it to be too sharp of a thing there. So I guess while we're at it, I might as well show you what happens when you redo your curve a little bit. So yeah, I, I just don't, I don't want the curve to be too severe anywhere. Cause otherwise it looks, it kind of looks like it whips a little too much. That's a little bit smoother. But of course now I need to change this. Where did it go? There it is. So frame 150, GZ, and pop it right back where it goes, and just replace that keyframe. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna call the tutorial at that, um, but for those of you who are particularly interested and promise not to comment that this video is too long, I'm going to just do some other little animation thingies here. Maybe we bump up our uh, focal length, not animation, but it's really more like rendering things. So I'm just going to uh, try to get kind of a cool composition going here. Um, is that cool? It doesn't really feel very cool. I guess we want to be able to kind of see everything that's happening, right? Let's, uh, let's put it right there. And let's maybe make this like way longer, which that way maybe? Yeah, so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't go off the screen. Um, lighting, you know, everyone's always interested in lighting. Why don't we do a little lighting? Let's add in an area light and just bring it up here a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit brighter. Maybe bring down the spread. This is totally the style nowadays. This uh, bright, bright spread. Or yeah, bringing down the spread value gives that kind of moody, moody, shadowy look. So you should totally do that. If you really want to be trendy, you can make it a rectangle. Because that is the real good stuff. Check that out. Trendy Rendy. Pull that down. Make your rectangle bigger. Make it square because you're definitely putting this on Instagram. 1080 by 1080. Set yourself a little render border. Get rid of that ugly gray world. Make this so it's big enough. And add in some other materials. So. Let's call this the base material. And that's just gonna be white. And then let's add in a metal material. Maybe make that metallic. And maybe make it a little darker. And a little shinier. Oh yeah, that's nice. Real nice. 
Let's make this the base material. And let's also add the metal material to it. And let's call that metal. And where does that get applied to? Well, oh boy. Where is my, oh man, edit mode. Uh, okay, so I can't see it. Is that because of this thing being viewport? Okay, so, uh, oh boy, I found a whole new problem that you get with the thing. There, okay, so viewport render looks like it's disabling. Oh man, and then this doesn't even have... So I was adding materials to the plane object, but I need to add them to this one. Metal. Good thing I did this part. Okay, now I think I can go back into my plane instance object. Let's call instance. Probably spelled that wrong. Instance. Nope. Freaking nailed it. Um, where was that setting? Here. Disable viewport. Now I've got the metal going in. Okay. That's looking pretty good. And, you know, maybe we add in... Nah, we don't need to add depth of field. But we could add a little bit more light to this scene. Like, eh, maybe we just add in a little bit of sky texture. Bring the strength on that up just a tad. Sun size, sun rotation. That's unnecessary. Let's just leave it at the uh, the moody version. So that's cool. Chord comes in. And pop right into the slot. Right there at the end of your animation. All right, I think let's actually leave it at that. I might play with this a little around, a little bit more, render it out. Oh wait, one more thing for the real pros that wanted to stay. Um, when you're animating something plugging in, it looks really cool if there's a little bit of like resistance when it plugs in. So the way you can do that is just insert a keyframe on the location, kind of right before Oh, where did I, this keyframe, yeah. And then if you go into your graph editor, you can like make this go, let's flatten that handle, and then make this like that. So it kind of stops first and then plugs in. And we can make this whole animation have a little bit of a pause at the end. Um, that's it. Just, you know, add a little extra keyframe where it slows down. And then you just have a little resistance. If you don't want to make it fully, like, resisted, but just slow down a little bit, then you can just kind of tweak that curve. Pull that out. I think it looks good when it comes to kind of a hard stop like that, because then you get that kind of like, it's all the way in feeling. And my tilt is a little bit off there, but yeah. That is how you do that. That's how I did it on the G. Well, actually, I did it a crappier way on the G from my 36 Days of Type project. Um, but I did a little research, a little trial and error, a lot of getting really frustrated with curve modifiers. And I've got this system, which I think is a little bit better than the way I had it before. So anyways, thanks for watching. This file will be on my Patreon page uh, if anybody wants to just download it and dive in. But pretty easy. Definitely encourage you to give this a shot for yourself. If you make something, definitely tag me. I would love to see it. And yeah, hope everyone has a fantastic day wherever you are. Uh, congratulations on learning Blender. It's the coolest thing in the world. Goodbye.